there's no other ways to violate your marriage too, right? Because it's supposed to be only two people. So when you do something and you overstep your other partner and you let your child uh, do something that your partner say not do, you overstepped your marriage. You you literally disobeyed God. And then when you even do something so simple as allow your parents to integrate your marriage. We always look at the six as the, the furthest thing for immorality in regards to it. When there are so many other ways that we are sinning and the marriage is being unlawful and the marriage is being tainted, that we don't realize how much you should be including prayer and what these vows actually stand for. It don't go to I'm an individual. No, you not no individual. You not thinking as one person by yourself. No, should you know how? Yes. But it's always in the image of your partner and in your spouse. And for people who are married, you know, I would think that some of y'all would need to know that. Yeah, I agree with what you said, um, Paris. And um, I think, unfortunately, the word cheating here is is like a bad word, right? Because we're talking about how cheating starts, but the but cheating has a connotation that only um talks about like someone stepping out sexually, like someone physically cheating, right? But what we're really talking about here is unfaithfulness and infidelity, and and like so when we're talking about unfaithfulness and how how that and how infidelity starts. That starts when you when the faithfulness in your relationship stops. That starts when you guys stop uh, functioning with fidelity. And, and how does that happen? One of, one of the main ways to stop the fidelity of your relation is to stop connecting on a sexual level, to stop having sexual intimacy. Sexual intimacy is one of the only things that makes a marriage different than any other relationship, so to speak. You know, you don't have that same sexual intimacy with your friends and, and exclusivity. So you have you don't have sexual intimacy and exclusivity with your friends. You don't have that with just somebody you're dating. You have that with your spouse. So the moment that someone who who's requiring you to be a part of this motion for us to have fidelity and faithfulness, if you're not holding up your end of the bargain, you're being unfaithful. You're 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 practicing infidelity, and you're the cause of this relationship. Um, you're the cause of cheating. Because cheating is a byproduct of infidelity and it's a byproduct of unfaithfulness. It's not the cause of it. So. All right. So we are about to wrap this up. Um, do y'all have any closing statements? I let us see Miss Taken like she holding back. <laughs> I told you I would be quiet for the rest of the time. I mean, uh, people are going to decide what is going to work for them. And I agree that people use the Bible to to manipulate a situation in the way that they see it. I'm just looking at what it says specifically. And if it says that specifically, there's no room for interpretation in regards to that specific thing. That's it's all I'm saying. For um, not when it's specific. Everything is up for interpretation in the Bible. It's the most manipulated text in the world. So not when it's, it's part like, specific. Here's, here's the thing. specific, I, like when it says not to um not to withhold sex from your partner because your body no longer belongs to you. You mean specific no, like that? No, that's specific. That's not room up for interpretation. Absolutely not. What I'm referring to, y'all keep re reading those those texts when I asked a specific question. I said, what does it say and where, where in the scripture does it say outside of adultery, you can leave the marriage or you can go outside of your marriage? It nobody, does not nobody say that. Ever claimed that. What we're claiming, oh. what we're claiming, right. is that, no, no, no. What we're claiming is that withholding sex is adultery. No one is not. It is <laughs> you know what adultery means? Adultery does not mean withholding sex. Please somebody look up what the definition of adultery means. It's not that. All I'm saying is this, speaking, like I said, and I agree with what Jay was saying in terms of not walking away because you stepped outside, you should just walk. I, I, I totally actually agree with that. But that goes back to my original point. In marriage, you're not gonna necessarily meet everybody's need 100% of the time. And when that happens, that doesn't excuse or give an excuse to walk away from the relationship. You don't. You'll be walking away from relationships for the rest of your life if that's the case. So even if a partner does step outside of their marriage, do I personally think that's an automatic reason that you should just walk out and, and leave and divorce? No, I don't. I do think you should give room for grace. Everybody wants grace or want, wants grace extended to them until they're the one that have to extend the grace to others. So if, if somebody steps out 
on a marriage, do I think you should automatically get a divorce? No, but if you're religious, um, is that the reason that you can step out um, and, and get a divorce? Yes, but what I'm saying is if you choose to stay in a marriage, knowing that your partner has stepped out, that's fine if you're getting to the crooks of what occurred and finding out what led to that. So then you can make any adjustments that you need to, to prevent it from happening again. However, like Jay said, if it's habitual at that point, you're showing that you don't want to be in a, a marriage. So at that point, let it go. You're not doing it for when you're saying that you're doing it for the kids. If that's going to create angst amongst the husband and wife, if it's going to create trust issues between a husband and wife, it is you're going to see a breakdown in all other areas from that. If you're just staying for the kids, you're not raising them in an environment that's healthy. So that's going to impact them as well. M and mistake. You don't think there's going to be some trust issues when, when I'm trying when you constantly turning me down from giving you ass. You don't think in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, are you getting some ass from somebody else? Why are you not giving me no intimacy? What's what's the issue? You don't think that's, that's going the to issue. Happen? Exactly. You take time to talk about that. What is the intimacy issue? Intimacy issue? Why are we not having sex? What is going on? That's the thing. That's where the communication part comes in. So if you do have a trust issue, you need to bring it to her. And if she can't address it, then y'all go ahead and y'all get counseling or what have you so you can explore that. Communication is the key. If your response to every time something happens is to step outside of your marriage or relationship to resolve it, you're not going to have a marriage. You're not. You think men are just willingly just going out there, stepping outside, would even out having a come. You think most men are not having no conversation at all? They just say, "Fuck it, I'm not getting no ass." That's not how we move in. Exactly. Most of the time, we bring it up to you over. We a whole year we went without sex. We done brought it over every month. Hey, baby, can I get sick? Now nah, my head hurts. No, I'm tired. I'm on my menstrual. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. We're having a conversation. We're, we're constantly reminding you that we do want sex. What I'm asking for, but yet then I'm talking to you about, hey, well, why ain't we being more intimate? We're, we're having a conversation, yet they falling on deaf ears. Or you, you, you start to do it, and then all of a sudden you fall back into your norm, and they're not giving me sex, but on my birthday, Valentine's, and Christmas. I will say this: I wish more women who actually had healthier marriages stop trying to weaponize their ring when you having the same problems that we have, and we able to escape without it. Um, and when you sit down and you're talking about what the value of marriage actually is and you can remove your religion from why you're honoring your marriage and actually saying I'm here because I made a conscious decision to be here and this is a relationship I chose to be in and I'm working towards it because I wanted to keep it together. Because what we fail to realize is everybody ain't practicing your religion. And that's coming up from a person who grew as a Christian. So the only time you can weaponize your marriage and say why you're doing those things is in the basis of religion. And then, then try to make other women feel, not, not mis mistaken, but try to make other women feel bad because they don't have no ring. I do not feel bad for consciously knowing when I do it, I'm going to do it one time. I won't be having all of these issues. I won't be having all of these unlearned lessons that you guys are constantly complaining about because you guys are the same ones telling us now I'm a single woman in a marriage. I don't want those problems. And I also don't want them at the basis of your main issue with your man is cheating. More, more married women need to start talking about what the positive are and how they contribute to their marriage instead of trying to make other women feel like they're less than because they're not married. Because I promise you, we're dealing with the same BS. I get the same things out of a man that you can get out of him, married or not. 